Hello guys, my name is Josip, I'm Head of Solutions and Memgraph and today I'm going to show you how you can analyze your data set in Memgraph uh, if you're having a supply chain domain, if you're a supply chain analyst, if you want to actually use a graph database and choose Memgraph as your go-to solution to address supply chain challenges. Here we have our own uh, Memgraph lab, my local Memgraph lab, so let's actually start Memgraph. Uh, with this crazy command called firemage uh, which resembles actually starting the docker container of memgraph mage and let's connect to our instance here is the main the, the main um, page of uh, memgraph lab and in the data sets sections we can browse to the supply chain analysis load our data set and uh, then we can see what's happening with it uh, if you can see, we have 34 uh, nodes, 49 relationships. Here is our usage uh, inside uh, Memgraph, uh, Memgraph Lab. Uh, we can here inspect the graph schema and see actually what's happening. So actually we have a supplier which supplies us, supplies us with an ingredient. Ingredient forms a recipe, recipe produces a product which can then again form a recipe and then uh, the final recipe produces the final product which is then shipped to the customer. It's pretty simple, uh, nothing much. It will, it actually looks like a direct acyclic graph. Uh, so it's actually something like this. Um, uh, and yeah, we can uh, do all sorts of things if we, if we, if we have a tree-like graph. So let's go to our collections. And here I have a supply chain management collection it has 10 queries and what's this it's actually like a library of queries which you can present to your peers to your colleagues and show what you've been doing with the data set so if we actually go and retrieve all these nodes uh, and edges uh, then we can see that we have gotten a vast graph um, we have uh, even colored nodes with uh, with icons that's because of our graph style editor is here and then if you have a supplier then you can select an image URL and then you can style your graph as you want. Uh, since Memgraph doesn't have like a tree layout I'm going to uh, first order these nodes so you can actually see what's going on and uh, yeah if you if you want you can just use the double speed so you don't need to watch me uh, doing this but uh, I promise I'll be fast. Uh, so actually what we'll be doing in this uh, supply chain demo is uh, actually seeing through this tree uh, what suppliers do we have, what ingredients do we have, uh, what ingredients are actually necessary for the for the final product to, to be shipped and what maybe bottlenecks uh, do we need, uh, do, will we have on our, on our path, which is... Um, actually the most interesting part okay what what can we do to actually prevent bottlenecks and what can we do to to prevent actually shipment uh, shortages and stuff like that uh, this is the shipment uh, how the shipment even goes let me do uh, yeah, I put this recipe here then here then here this is final product uh, this is recipe Okay, yeah, this one goes here. This is intermediate product Recipe goes here Okay Recipe Yes Ah, okay, yeah, 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 that's actually uh, from the second phase, from the second phase, and yeah, now it, I think it all makes sense now. Let me just switch these two nodes, and yeah, we do now have our layout. So basically, we have suppliers which produce ingredients, it says supplies, then uh, we have, uh, let's see, what, what do we even have? Like, we have an ID and an ingredient, so it's ID and the name. And we that we have that for all of the for all of the uh, nodes actually it's shipping point two this is shipping point one recipe for final product three variant one variant two variant three 
whatever uh, and yeah maybe just to note so these forms and this produces it has a quantity so actually 100 quantity of the soup of this ingredient forms one quantity of this of this intermediate product and then they go into another recipe then they form a final product which is then shipped so yeah this this looks pretty cool but uh, yeah we don't need to render all of this we can maybe draw some insights from uh, from the graph and then see let uh, get ingredients provided by the supplier that's uh, that seems like a one hop query we just match the supplier which supplies an ingredient and return all the, the ingredients which it supplies pretty neat uh, doesn't do much uh, doesn't do us much uh, much insight but what's coming actually is pretty much more a lot more worthful and uh, actually this path uh, this time we'll be using BFS, which is our breath first search, which is uh, inlined in our cipher and actually embedded in our cipher. And here we can actually do a breath first search of arbitrary length and see which ingredients are actually needed to form the final product with ID6. If we run this query, it's pretty fast. We get uh, these ingredients which are all needed to form a final product. Uh, so this construct uh, doesn't actually appear in uh, this, actually, the, the PFS one doesn't appear in the open cipher, it's part of memgraph cipher. And uh, yeah, we have a documentation page which shows we have DFS, BFS, uh, weighted shortest path, all shortest path, and then you can do all sorts of filtering in order to retrieve the most accurate results. The only thing why we built this is actually to increase speed, increase accuracy, and make sure everything is... Uh, everything is actually calculated and returned from memgraph in one go in one round trip because that saves time and we are in memory and we are all about time latency throughput and maximizing that uh, so yeah you can query by hops you can even filter when you're dealing with uh, different traversals along your path you can filter the path you're currently expanding on it's a really cool feature so be sure to check it out um let's move to the next query checking dependencies of the product uh, with ancestors. So now we have a different construct, it's called a query module. And a query module is what you see here. It's called call and then you have a, a custom procedure which is then uh, called and then it yields like a result or something. So what you do with this call, you actually execute a piece of code and it can be in Python, it can be in C++, it can be in Rust. It's actually a product of memgraph. Uh, query modules and uh, actually with the API that's connected to memgraph we can uh, go through the graph storage uh, from the inputs and then yield the uh, outputs and return it to the query. What's the benefit? It's executed all inside memgraph in one go just the same like we did with these uh, uh, with these inline path, path filterings. So if I actually uh, no. Uh, it's not here, but uh, yeah. If you actually look at these uh, query modules, actually, what it what happens there uh, in other databases? So they actually query, they get their results through the application, they process the results, then they go second application right back to the database and everything. It's it's costly with MemGraph. It's always executed inside MemGraph, so you begin a query. You go inside a query module, you go process whatever it is you want, then via the API you return the results and then they're actually, um, they return back to the query. What then happens, they're actually, all, everything is executed inside memgraph, you save time, latency, you get better, better, better returns. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, you can uh, you can basically write your own models. We will see uh, later how to how to write your own model. But this is actually something that's part of our Memgraph Mage library. Memgraph Mage is a collection of open source graph algorithms that are compatible with Memgraph. They're written, like I said, in different programming languages. You can write your own and push it to to Mage. And we have a vast uh, we have a vast uh, number of of graph algorithms such as PageRank, such as community detection. Uh, we do have integrations like KuGraph, which enables you to, to execute algorithms on the on the GPU. We have ML algorithms and, of course, our, our, our built-in, which are not actually part of Mage, but they are algorithms. Mm. 
So yeah, if we actually go through the final product and yield the ancestors, it will actually give us all the parents of that node. And if we go here, we have we see we have a lot of parents, but actually what it makes sense is making actually a graph out of it. So we'll use the help of our connect nodes module, which will actually yield all the all the all the connections. Well, this is weird. I am not sure why why this doesn't work. As no sleeve collections. Uh, let me just see if, if I even have connect nodes. Nodes yield connections. Yeah, yeah, this is some kind of intermediate issue. I'm not sure. Um, so yeah, we do have here our graph and it sees like for this final product one, all of these depend on them. And that means we need to be watchful for these suppliers here because if one actually cancels out our, our supplies, then we need to make sure that all the ingredients here are actually supplied uh, to form this final product. So that may be one reasoning, reasoning which you can actually make uh, when you're when you're doing such such inference with this and then let's say what's what happens if this one uh, supplier called Plissimus, uh what's actually their children we go over the children and uh, all the two hop three hop and n hop children with the algorithm called descendants we get these ones but yeah at uh, then again we can actually connect them with the with the connect nodes, uh, it actually goes from the first time, and we can see that actually this supplier is uh, responsible to us for product three, product two, and product one, which means he is a high value supplier. We don't want, uh, we want good relations with him, and we need to make sure that if he cancels out some of the supplies, that we have a backup plan. So it's actually pretty handy for impact analysis and stuff you might need. That happens. Uh, surely in uh, in supply chain uh, you don't want your orders to be late and and stuff like that uh, we can use also a topological sort so let's say we have a recipe to a final product we here with the projection we can uh, go uh, go with the subgraph and we can see actually using the topological sort what's actually the order of execution of one of ones oh i'm not sure why yeah, it's it's a bit weird that this only that this only executed uh, the second time I clicked. But yeah, I'll report it to the to the lab. Topological sort. It says like um, so. It looks at the priorities of which nodes need to be traversed in order for the execution to go smoothly. It's like something like uh, like a job shop problem. Uh, not a job shop problem, but uh, it's all these graphs like. You, you have like prerequisites if all the prerequisites are done then you can actually start another task which is uh, which is in our in our case it would be like if all ingredients are met then you can actually go to the recipe and if all recipes are met then you can go to the final product and uh, and similar um, critical hubs acquiring critical hubs in the network uh, between the centrality so what's actually a critical hub? It's actually if you deny one product that lies on the path between uh, pairs of nodes, between a lot of pairs of nodes, its critical hub will be a lot more. So actually, we, we, we are here, we have here set the centrality, and because of our uh, graph style, sh style editor, we have, the, we have somewhere coded that because of this centrality, we will make the nodes bigger who have bigger centrality, and so it means that uh these nodes we are which are bigger are actually more important to be taken care of rather than than others um so yeah, like these intermediate products need to be taken care of uh and everything so yeah it says an algorithm like between the centrality detects hubs on the network based on the number of paths that cross a node from all the pairs of nodes in the graph so if you cut something in the graph it will even have a bigger centrality uh uh, than, than before. And then let's see how our query modules look like. Let's say we have made our analysis, but we do want to make our custom analysis because not like all graph algorithms can be made general. So actually in here we have, uh, 
It says, okay, we are wondering how many total quantities of ingredients we might need to produce the final product with the quantity of one. And now we have seen that in the graph schema we have these uh, producers uh, quantity and then forms quantity, but we need somehow from the ingredients to get to, get to the final product and we need, to, we need to somehow multiply on every hop what's going to happen in order to get the, the final quantity. So if we go back to our to our supply chain management, we'll see that I have here made a query module in Python. It's like a pretty uh, easy function. And then if I import this, uh, and here you have like a query module, I'll create a new query module, quantitative analysis. Uh, if I make a new query module, I get here that I can use the the, the, the code editor, I save the, the file and then I have actually my my procedure which is loaded. And here what it actually says, it says material quantities, we yield the record material and quantity. So actually we want to get an ingredient and a quantity of it to produce, uh, to produce one. We here have our own basic calculation and if we actually go to supply chain management, we can, we can actually already run that query module and we call it like quantitative analysis just like we have done it. Uh, material quantities is the name of the function for this uh, final product of type one. We actually go and we actually see that we need ingredient eight with quantity 7,000, ingredient seven, quantity 3,500 3, 3, and uh, similar to them, the others. So actually we have gotten all the quantities in order for final product of one quantity to be produced. I hope this intro was uh, interesting to us, I hope you gained some knowledge and I hope you analyze your supply chain better now with uh, Memgraph and that you make your, uh, uh, your Memgraph a go-to graph solution for supply chain. Be safe and see you next time.